Welcome to DozoChem. This video covers electron configurations of atoms that involve s and p orbitals. An orbital is a three-dimensional space around the nucleus with a high probability of finding an electron inside. Orbitals are labeled with a number and then a letter, so we can write nx for now. The number which we call n is the principal quantum number and that gives you an idea of the relative size of the orbital and then the letter gives you an idea of the shape of the orbital um, so if it's an s then it's going to have a spherical shape and if it's a p it's going to have a dumbbell shape um, and remember I'll emphasize this again later but um, maximum two electrons can fit in each orbital so here's a visual of what some of these orbitals look like imagine the nucleus is at the dead center of each of these orbitals so a 1s orbital, the 1 means it's relatively small and s means it's spherical, so you could fit two electrons in that area around the nucleus. Then the 2s is also spherical, but it's larger, right, because the principal quantum number 2 in front means it's larger than uh, the 1s. And then 2p um, is larger than the 1s and uh, because it's p, it's a dumbbell shape, and notice uh, p orbitals always occur in sets of three. They're just pointed in different directions coming off the nucleus. Um, so p orbitals, sets of three, each fits two electrons in it. Um, 3s and 3p are the same shapes as 2s and 2p, but larger, and then 4s is going to be spherical, but it's larger than the 3s. So Electron configurations are your way of telling someone where the electrons generally are located around the nucleus. Um, we use the word probability because they can move much further out some of the time, but most of the time they'll be found in these particular orbitals. Um, so what I've done here is written the possible orbitals where you could put electrons, and I've put them in the order that you're going to start putting the electrons in. Um, remember the rule, maximum two electrons per orbital. So an s orbital, you can fit up to two. p orbitals, since they come in sets of three, with two electrons in each, you can fit up to six total electrons in a set of p orbitals. So the strategy for writing electron configurations is called the Aufbau principle, or building up principle, where we're just going to simply add electrons, starting with the 1s, and when that one's full, we just keep um, adding electrons in the order that I wrote on the previous slide until we run out. So let's do a couple of examples. The element potassium has 19 electrons. So we write 1s, and then you use subscripts to tell someone how many electrons maximum you could fit in there. So s orbitals, you can fit 2. And then you go on to 2s, and you can fit 2. Then you go on to 2p. Now remember, p orbitals occur three at a time and you can fit two electrons in each, so you can fit a total of six in a set of p orbitals. Then we go 3s, we can fit two electrons. 3p, we can fit another six electrons. If you stop right there, that would be 18 electrons. Um, we have one more to go, so the 4s isn't going to be full. It's going to be half full. Even though there's room for two, you only have one electron left, so you would just write 4s1. Uh, the element sulfur, 16 electrons. So we do the same thing, and we can pick up the pace a little bit. S's have two in them. Each set of p orbitals has six electrons in it. And if you fill the 3s with two electrons, at that point you will have 12. So when you get to the 3p, even though there's room for six, uh, you only have four more electrons. So we're not going to write a six there. We're going to write a four. Um, now a definition valence electrons means the sum of the electrons with the highest principal quantum number. So if you look down at potassium and you look at the numbers in front of the letters, um, the highest numbered orbitals, in this case the 4, has one electron in it, so you would say one valence electron. But if you look at sulfur, this orbital here and this one have threes in front, so the total number of electrons in what we call the third principal level or third shell uh, sometimes people use that term shell uh, there's six total electrons so you would say there's six valence electrons for sulfur 
Now, you might be asking, do I really have to write out all those orbitals um, when I want to tell someone an electron configuration? And the answer is, most of the time, no, you don't. There's a shortcut. It's called the shorthand noble gas electron configuration. Uh, noble gases are column 18 or group 18 on the periodic table. So the general strategy would be you go up one row from where your element is, and you go all the way to the right, and that's column 18, and you write down the symbol of the noble gas in brackets that's in the row above and all the way to the right. And then you would figure out how many electrons that noble gas has and continue on after that with the ns level where n is the row number of your element. So potassium 19 electrons, we just did this example, is in the fourth row. So I go up to the third row and I go all the way to the end on the right and I write that noble gas in brackets, argon. And argon has 18 electrons. So that takes care of my first 18 electrons. So I actually only have to put one more electron after that and the orbital you start with is whatever your row number is. So K is in row 4, so I'm going to start with 4S because we're always going to start with the NS where N is the row number of your element. So now let's go and do sulfur. If we go up one row from sulfur all the way to the right, we get neon is the noble gas, and that takes care of 10 electrons. I know I have 16 total, so I need to fill in six more after that. Um, so since I'm in row 3, for sulfur, I'm going to start with 3s and go from there. So the 3s fits two electrons, and then I still have four more to go, so I put those in the 3p. So there is a shorthand way to do it that uh, saves you some time and is pretty much all you need to know for a lot of the purposes we'd use later on. All right, so let's end by doing a quick practice example. It says, write the complete and shorthand electron configuration for n and al and determine the number of valence electrons. So n has seven electrons. So if we're starting at the beginning, 1s fits 2, 2s fits 2, and at that point, even though the 2p fit a total of 6, we only have three electrons left, so we write 2p3. And the shorthand, if you go up one row from n and all the way to the right, the noble gas there is helium. Um, that's two electrons only, so we still have to do five more. Um, since nitrogen's in the second row, we start with 2s. Um, that fits two electrons. And then the 2p, we have three more to give us our total of seven electrons. Um, in terms of valence electrons, remember valence electrons are the ones with the highest n value. Um, so both the ones in the 2s and the 2p are called valence electrons. So uh, if you add all that up, you get five valence electrons. And then aluminum... 13 electrons, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, at that point that's 10, so I got three more to go, 3s2, and then 3p1 gets us 13 electrons. If I'm doing the shorthand, I go up one row and all the way to the right, and you put neon in brackets, that's 10 electrons, so I need three more aluminums in the third row, so I start with 3s, and I put two electrons there, and then my remaining electron I put in the 3p. Um, and then valence, here, here's the principal quantum number for the highest numbered electrons. And there's a total of three valence electrons in the third shell, or the third principal quantum level. Um, so that's it for this video. Good luck.